patient is in your chair. Everything seems great, although they say, I do not want any x-rays. What do you do? We're going to answer that in episode 12 of the Dental Practice Fixers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. David Maddow, along with... Dr. Richard Amato, your co-host and fellow dental practice fixer. Thanks so much, everybody, for being with us today. Uh, and thanks, most of all, for all your great comments about the dental practice fixers and going on iTunes and giving us a good rating. Feel free to do that all you like and tell your friends. But most of all, send us your questions. It may just wind up on an episode of the dental practice fixers. We've got a great question for episode 12. I'm just going to get right down to it. And here's our question for today. It says, dental practice fixers. I had a new patient recently, a young woman who absolutely refused to have radiographs taken. She assured me that she was not pregnant. No way in hell was her exact phrase. No way in hell. You can just picture this scene. <laughs> but that she didn't believe in x-rays. She thought they could be dangerous and didn't want them because she wasn't having any problems. If her dental condition was 100% immaculate, I could maybe have let it slide, but she did have two crowns, a few restorations, and mild gingivitis. I love that term, mild, mild A little gingivitis. mild gingivitis, very mild. Some garden variety, garden variety gingivitis. <laughs> I told her I could not see her as a patient without x-rays, and she raised a big fuss and walked out. Nice. I love that. Nice. Could this have been handled differently? From Dr. Amy in Aurora. 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 Dr. Amy and Aurora. We don't know if that's Aurora, Illinois, Aurora, Colorado. Maybe there's some other Auroras out there, but it doesn't matter. Dr. Amy, great question. So after this whole scenario, let's, let's start by her main question and see where it goes. And that is, could this have been handled differently? What do you think? I'll tell you something. From what Dr. A is Dr. Amy? Dr. Amy and Aurora. Dr. Amy and Aurora. Or is it, it Dr. Aurora and Amy? It could be Aurora and Dr. Amy Aurora. Aurora. Maybe Aurora Borealis. Maybe Aurora Miracle. Maybe. Um, I, know, I know we're always limited because, you know, when somebody writes in a question, they don't write a whole dissertation. We don't know everything. But um, from what I heard in the question, Rich, I think she handled it right. Um, I, I mean, could she have tweaked the language a little bit? Could she have done something? Maybe. But here, here's what I'm going to say. And maybe we're not this deep into it yet, but, but I've just got a general feeling I've got to let this out, okay? I've got to let it out. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Generally, generally speaking, a patient like this that just refuses x-rays because they say they're dangerous, I think a patient like that's just going to be trouble all along. I think. And, and should, if they absolutely refuse, even after some education, you're going to keep them in the practice? I'm not so sure. Well, I think that's a, that's a really good point, and that's the main point in this as well, and that is if a patient is trying to tell you what to do, if they're dictating how you do your diagnosis, how you treat them, whatever, is this patient right for your practice? And we'll get to that, but I think a sidebar is did Dr. Amy do anything to try to inform this patient, some would say educate, that these days x-rays are incredibly not Harmful. Now, if she did, she said, you know, we, we use digital x-rays. It's not like the old days. The amount of radiation is insignificant. And without them, you know, there could be cavities under that crown you have. And if we don't find those cavities, that could lead to much worse problems, including a root canal or an extraction. And that's why we like to do x-rays. That's why we require x-rays, whatever. Could Amy have done a little more? We're not sure about that because she's not on the show with us today. But my the way this question is phrased, it seemed like she just said, okay, you don't want x-rays, get the hell out of here, which I'm not so sure I'm a big fan of. Well, again, yeah, we're not, we're not sure to the extent of what, what Dr. Amy did. Um, but, you know, I, I think we, when we read a question like this and we're only limited to the information, I think I, a lot of times we just have to go on our gut feeling. And my gut feeling, again, just from, my, just from what you've said, is that this patient is a nutcase. And even if Dr. Amy would have explained more and more, like, okay, there's not as much, there's not nearly as much radiation with digital radiographs as there was in the past. I think this patient, she, she comes in and she, she's dictating how Dr. Amy needs to do her treatment and diagnose, diagnosis and treatment. I say, get rid of her. I say, if you're a busy practice, 
you know, you don't need to take every patient. And why deal with a nutcase that's going to be probably problems all along when you've got so many good patients that are going to listen to you and do what you recommend? That's, that's my feeling. Why, why are wow. we trying to talk? A, a, why are we trying nut to talk? Case. Why are we trying to talk? Case. Yeah, I'm going out on a limb and saying this patient sounds like a nutcase. Why are we? And it's not like she's we, an anti-vaxxer or a flat earther or something. So get rid of her. Get rid of her. If she's not. <laughs> now, look, there might be people listening to the show that don't care if they take radiographs on, on a patient or not. We're not. I'm not saying that's good. But if you, if you don't care and if you want to set yourself up for potential problems, then see her. But if you've got a good practice and you're really trying to diagnose properly and do the right thing, and you get somebody that comes in and is telling you what to do, and I don't want to, what, what else isn't she going to want? She's not going to, there's probably going to be some material or some kind of impression or something that she, I don't want that either. I say get rid of her. Okay, that leads to two questions now. So I hope I remember both. One is, I know some practices have the refusal to have x-rays form, and they say, okay, well, we really recommend them. If you don't want them, you need to sign this, and then we'll go ahead and treat you. I am not a fan of that. No. I, I think that can come back to haunt you in so many ways. I think that, I, first of all, I think that you would get killed in court if, if you treat a patient. I, you know, they're going to have a, your fantastic lawyer. It's, I, I just think that's a mistake. It's almost like saying, I give you permission not to do what you need to do. Well, does that really count? I don't think it counts. In a court of law, I think you're really hanging on iffy ground there. So now that leads to some more issues. What if you recommend treatment for a patient and they say, well, I don't like that. Is there any way to do it differently? Can you do that more cheaply? Can you only do what my insurance covers? Now we're still talking about a patient dictating treatment here. I agree. That's why I said I don't, I don't have good feeling about this patient at all. And I still go back to what I said originally. If you've got a, a decent practice and you've got other patients coming in that are going to uh, you know, uh, listen to you and, and agree and be reasonable, then those are the kind of patients you want to see all day long. And these patients that are refusing this and that and making you change your, your philosophy, we don't need patients like that. I mean, look, we, Rich, you and I have been preaching for a long time about how to have a more preaching? successful, <laughs> a busier practice. <laughs> yeah. Teaching, preaching, whatever you, I don't, you know, forget the semantics. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, I think Dennis, for some reason, feel that they need a lot of dentists feel like they need to take everybody that walks in the door i don't feel that way well i don't either and i think that's one of the big lessons as well that we i feel like i'm saying this all the time so maybe it is preaching we are not obligated to see every single patient yeah. unless somebody is bleeding swollen in severe pain that's our deed to society to take care of those people in my opinion i think you agree whether they can pay or not if somebody comes in and they're bleeding or in horrible pain well it's great to be able to help someone like that but what about some gray areas what if a patient's got a pretty destroyed tooth that's just you know missing a lot of structure it's just a mess we've seen all these before and we want to do a crown and we recommend a crown and the patient says well can't you just do a filling well, you could do a large filling. It might not last. It might not be a good restoration. It could cause bigger problems in the future. It's better than nothing. Is this patient now dictating treatment? Well, I would feel, it's a great question. I would feel better with something like that. As long as, okay, if it's a purely financial thing and they just can't afford a cram, but something needs to be done and they realize it's not ideal treatment and you're, and you're telling them, and you're educating, you're documenting everything. I feel better with that because that patient is really not trying to the way I look at it, they're not really dictating treatment. They just say, hey, I can't afford the Cadillac. Give me the Buick or something, you know, something like that. The filling's not the Buick, Tom. It's not the Buick. Okay, give, yeah. me the, um, give me the Chevrolet Chevelle or Chevette. Chevette. Chevelle, Chevette. 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 Right. Chevette. No, Chevette. Or the Ford Pinto. Is that, where, is that where you're going here? Hey, I love, I, I, I love those Pintos. They're great. Yeah, <laughs> I like the Pinto station wagons. It's, oh, it's, man. Love I know it. in, in California, it seems to be very into restore some of those old cars, like a beautifully restored oh, Ford Maverick. Or a Pinto oh, wagon. Really I like the cool. Maverick. How about the Mavericks with like the real big bumpers? That was seven. Oh yeah, the JS model. Yeah, 1974 yeah, yeah. JS. They must be um, maintenance nightmares though, and they, they don't have the safety features of modern cars. Right, but they, they look right. cool. They look cool. They look cool. Yeah. But I feel better. I feel better with somebody like that, and they they're going into it knowing that okay. I mean, you're not doing anything. Okay, let's face it. I don't think there's anything. There's no malpractice there if you're telling a patient they need a crown, but you're going to attempt a large filling. I don't think. I don't think that's malpractice. I don't I wonder think, if it leads to a root fracture and they lose the tooth. Um, I don't think it's in the same league as just saying, okay, we won't do radiographs. I just don't, I, you know, 
I don't think it's in the same league. Um, well, I think one of the big differences differences is treatment versus diagnosis. If somebody refuses radiographs, you can't even do your proper diagnosis. Right. right. So maybe that's a line that could be drawn, kind of a, a demarcation there. Treatment, if you inform the patient of the best treatment they can't get and they want something compromised, maybe you can let them make that choice. I'm not a big fan of it, but you know, maybe you can do that. When it comes to diagnosis, yeah. draw the line. Agree, I, w I would. And, and bottom line, I, I, I kicked that woman out of the practice so fast it wouldn't be funny. Okay, well, let, let's have that nutcases then. You use that phrase, that extremely derogatory phrase, nutcases. Nut Total nutcase. <laughs> I'm not PC. I don't care. I'm not PC in it anymore. How about other nutcases? Yeah. Uh, get rid of all nutcases. What, what, give me an example. Give me an example of a nutcase. Uh, a patient that's, okay, here's, you know, I don't know if you call this a nutcase. I think we've all had these kind of patients. I had them in my past in my practice. A patient that says, I don't want any anesthetic. Just, just treat me. I can put up, I remember one guy in specific, he happened to be a relative. The guy was flailing around like he was in a torture it took me five times as long. I was totally stressed out. He was totally stressed out. I don't think I did my best work. And then to make it worse, I didn't even charge him because he was a relative. If you're watching, I doubt you are, but you know who you are. Screw him. Screw In retrospect, him. I should have said no. No, I, I insist on treating patients who are numb and comfortable and comfortably numb. Is that a nutcase? Somebody that says, I don't want anesthetic. Not necessarily. However, okay, I would treat them up to the point where um, – they're not, if, if they want no anesthetic and they're comfortable and they're sitting back, no problem. Once they start flailing around like you just described and you can't do your best work, I'd say it's either anesthetic or you're out of here, buddy. I don't okay, care if you're my relative or not. Get the hell out of here. That's not a nutcase. It, it's not, no, that's not necessarily a nutcase. That's, it's somebody that just doesn't want anesthesia. That's, that's, I mean, some people would say that 90% of TMJ and facial pain patients are nutcases. Yeah. And then what's the, um, what's the, the other uh, malady that people have that I think a lot of people, I, I'm not saying this is true, but a lot of people would say, what's that? Um, fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia. I mean, is that a nutcase patient? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, I think before judging that, we might say a fibromyalgia patient would have some inherent difficulties in treating. That's for sure. So we say we don't, we, our practice does not accept fibromyalgia patients or TMJ patients or uh, you know, any of those. Wow. Kind of like that sushi bar that had a big sign on the door that said, um, no California roll, no spicy tuna roll. They're just like eliminating people that don't want right from the get go. Oh, are you going to treat somebody with Meniere syndrome? I don't even know what it is. So I guess, I guess I'll say yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I, here's where I limit it. Okay. I would absolutely not treat somebody that came into my office that had Groats disease. They're, they're gone. Well, Groats, you just can't treat groats. Groats is it's groats. tough. I, I, okay, but that, that's a management issue, I think, more than anything else. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to say I, I accept Before long, you won't have any patients. I'm just not going to accept nut cases, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think with we've that reached said, a conclusion. I, I, we've reached a logical conclusion, but again, um, I think that maybe Dr. Amy didn't try hard enough to let this patient know how safe and important radiographs are. But at that point, if she like exhausted all those opportunities and the patient said, no, I agree. I don't yeah. like signing the little thing saying I refuse yeah. x-rays. I, I could come back to I'd bite say, you on the ass big time. I'd say 30 seconds. If she can't explain in 30 seconds, you don't have to go into like a five minute. Oh, no, no, no scientific. You don't have to talk about Dr. Seconds. Redkin. 15 to 30 seconds. If this patient still says, I don't care, I don't want him, then you're, you're out of here, buddy. Next. Yeah, I mean, next. Well, why next. is that any different than a patient saying, I don't want you to use the periodontal probe on me? Would you have that patient in your practice? Absolutely no, not. No way. No. Zero chance. Especially they come in knowing the term periodontal probe. That's asking for trouble. <laughs> How about a patient says, I don't want you checking for fremitus? I do not want anybody here checking my mouth for fremitus. I think I'd want that patient in my practice. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a phone call, man. All right, let's do it. Before we do the phone call, hey, we've got a master class coming up. It's going to be in Baltimore. We are doing one for the first time on a Saturday. I know some people kind of complained. Hey, I want to come to the master class, but I can't take off too much work. It's, for, it's totally worth it. But for you or for anyone else, go to masterclass.matto. Dot com to see what the whole thing is about. It really, this is no exaggeration. It really could be 
the most important day you've ever had in your years of practicing dentistry. Master classes for docs only, for practice owners only, looking to make some major improvements, kind of turn that corner, maybe take their practice from good to great or from mediocre to good or from downright shitty to fantastic, whatever it is. If you're really looking for some positive change in your practice, check it out, masterclass.matto. Dot com. It's a small, intimate group, and really, really good things happen. We'd love to see you there. There you go. And while we're giving tips, Rich and I love, even the small tips are good. And here's one that's going to change the way you're doing credit card processing in your office and save you some money every single month. It's very simple. We believe in our partners, um, Fat Merchant. They're, they do it in a, just a modern cool way. I don't even have to go into the detail because we promise you, you will save money every single month and it's simple to switch over. We have a lot of our friends and followers and doctors that are that have switched over to Fat Merchant already. Check them out. It, we've set up a simple, a very simple link and I want to make sure I get it right this time. It's bit.ly. If you're watching the video, we're going to have it right below us. bit.ly slash fat mad and fat mad is spelled F A T T M A D. Check them out. The link right there, bit.ly slash F A T T M A D. You will change your credit card processing forever in your practice and make more money every month. We promise. All right. Do a call. Let's do the phone call. It happens to be thematically linked to Dr. Amy's question. So let's see what happens. To serve you better, this call may be recorded for training and quality purposes. Good morning, this is Amy. Hi, I've got a quick question for you. Um, I want to come in as a dental patient, but I'm not sure about dental x-rays. I know that dentists usually insist on taking x-rays. Is that the way it is at your office? Have you had any anywhere else that we could kind of get emailed here so we would at least have like a baseline? Yeah, I haven't had x-rays for a while. Oh, well. What we could do is kind of take the minimum of just the two on each side, and that will help him just to make sure because um, for him to do an exam, he wouldn't want to miss any cavities. So that helps him see between the teeth. And then mm. the rest of the surfaces he can see, you know, from looking in there. Yeah, yeah. Are those safe? Excuse me? Or is, that, is that safe? I'm just really concerned about radiation yeah. from x-rays. So, so what, what the thing is, now they're actually um, digital. So when it's a digital x-ray, it takes a lot less radiation. Um, you can get more radiation, you know, from being outside or being on a plane. So especially for just taking the two on each side, you, you wouldn't have any issues at all with that. Um, uh -huh. Good. Back um, when they were filmed, it took a little more radiation to expose it, but now that everything's digital, it's, you know, it's very, very minimal. Oh, cool. And, but what if I decide I just don't want them at all? Is that still okay? I'd have to check with them, but I'm pretty sure just legally he'd have to have them to do an exam. But hold on one second. Without metal wires or brackets, Invisalign is removable, so you can eat and drink what you want while in treatment. Plus, brushing and flossing are no problem. Plus, Invisalign is comfortable because it has no metal to cause mouth abrasions during treatment. And no metal in wires usually means you spend less time in our office getting adjustments. Find out if you're a candidate. Ask about Invisalign today. We'll be happy to tell you more. So, yes, he would have to have them just, you know, for legal reasons. Um, he wouldn't be able to do an exam. And then we also wouldn't be able to do a cleaning without an exam. So it's kind of like... Okay. So if I don't want them, I probably maybe should find another office. You know, the thing is, I'd, I don't know that there would be one since that is the law in South Carolina and the standard of care. But, um, yeah, that's just... You know. That's actually a law. Wow. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so... What the American Dental Association requires is an uh, exam by the dentist once a year, and you must have that before you can even have any cleaning or anything from us. And to do a proper exam, you have to have uh, x-rays, or uh, in other words, you're doing an exam where you're not able to diagnose, so you're kind of, it's kind of a little bit of fraud because you're saying you're doing an exam, but you can't really do an exam. Wow, it's fraud. That's pretty, and the American Dental yeah, Association requires that. Wow, mm -hmm. so, interesting. And they actually have a website which, you know, shows all the different ones that they recommend. And then it also um, 
has a little chart on the radiation to where it actually explains what x-rays are equal to, kind of like, you know, just eating a banana, you can get more radiation from just one x-ray at a dental office. And then it just, it's a nice chart to take a look at. You get radiation from eating a banana? Yes, and then um, airplanes. How do you get radiation from eating a banana? (laughs) (laughs) I have no clue. It's just like a pretty cool chart that shows. Really, I'm definitely gonna, so that it's not like a microwave banana; it's just a regular banana. Yeah, right. And I, I don't know what it is, but apparently crazy. Somehow well, you get radiation from that. Yeah, and then just one plane ride is equal to like a full series of dental X-rays. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes so sense. Just, yeah, so it kind of just shows the different. It's just a pretty cool chart, but now it just takes very little radiation to get an image. So. Wow, very informative. I th- I, maybe I'll find a dentist who's not a member of the American <laughs> Dental Association. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, you know, I think I always say this after a call like that, but, like, but oh, my God. What, that that what had is, some, it had some twists and turns to it, that's for sure. What is the story that with that thing? I, I have a few comments. I, I, like the, uh, I like the own whole message for Invisalign. That was a nice touch. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, how, how frequently do we actually hear a good on-hold message when we do these calls? Almost, almost never. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that was, that part, that's good. That's good. Okay, she was very nice. She was, she was, she was pretty knowledgeable. She was nice. She was, yeah. she was cute. <laughs> she was knowledgeable. I mean, she certainly she knew what she was talking about, which kind I, think, of, kind of. I think that puts her ahead of many, many, many yeah. people. Right. But then she kind of started going off the deep end when she brought up that this is the law and the American Dental Association requires that you do this and that it's fraud if you don't. I'm not so sure about that. Right. So let's, let's take it back to the beginning. Um, what would you have liked to have? How, how should she have handled this? She's got a, a potential new patient on the phone who wants to come to the practice, but stating that he doesn't really want radiographs. What do you do? Do you try to explain everything on the phone or do you try to just get them into the office and do the explanation there? Okay, great question. We're, I'm going to go back to your term of nutcase earlier. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think if you can tell on the phone the patient is just a wacko and they're not going to fit in your practice, then just cut your losses. But I think if the patient's really reasonable, and I sounded pretty reasonable, I think. I just you know, yeah. had some questions about x-rays. I think if the patient sounds reasonable, you think they might be a good fit for your practice. I agree. Let's get them in, have them meet the doctor. Um, the doctor can just explain a little bit about x-rays slash radiographs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it might be worth a shot. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 Because then... Because- because once they're in the practice, I think there's a better chance of a, a true connection. Let's face it, when you're on the phone, there's not really like a true connection yet. Once you're there and you see these people are good and they, they really care and they say, come on, and they explain a little bit about this, this minimal radiation, I think there's a much better chance of, of saying, somebody saying, okay, I, I, I get it, let's, let's do it. As opposed I, to on I, the phone when she's talking about bananas and fraud and the ADA, that, that just is ridiculous. You can't do that on the phone. Yeah, I totally agree. And again, um, I'm not a lawyer. You're not a lawyer. But I think when you start saying things like this is fraud and the ADA requires that it's done this way, I think that's kind of combative type talk. I didn't care for that at all. And I I don't think it's accurate. Um, I remember a few episodes ago, somebody was saying, well, I could get sued if I do this. It's like, why why are you going to bring up things like fraud and the ADA requires? I just don't. I don't think anything good can come out of that conversation. Well, you had the best comeback ever. I mean, it was hilarious. I think, I think I'm going to try to find a dentist that's not a member of the ADA. I know, I know. And then she said, okay, bye, click. But, <laughs> but hold on. We, but we can't, we can't let this go without talking about the banana thing. Right. You get What's more, the story on the banana? I mean, come well, on. She said you get more radiation eating a banana. <laughs> Maybe, I said like a microwave banana. I don't, but I've never heard that before. Have you ever heard that before? No, and, and I'm a little bit worried because I had a banana just a little while ago, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I, I've had two bananas today already. It's one of my favorite <laughs> foods, favorite foods of all time. I Googled it, and, and there are people that claim, and maybe it is on the ADA website. I didn't, I didn't check that out, but it, a small percentage of the potassium in bananas are like ionized potassium molecules. Technically, they are radioactive, and, and they enter your body when you eat a banana, but... 
If you read a little further, you'll say there's no scientific basis for that because your body has a way of keeping the amount of radio. I mean, and again, I'm, I'm getting all this wrong, but, was, but essentially the, the, uh, the bottom line is you don't get radiation from eating a banana. Your body has a way of radiating Whew, I feel that. better now. I know. I know. You, you actually, okay. you're, you're glowing a little bit. If you don't well, I didn't, tell you, I didn't tell you what I had a little while before we started recording. I had, I had one banana. It might have been radioactive, and I had a nice big glass of heavy water. Wow. How heavy was it? It was pretty heavy. Okay. Well, you, you do look a little ra- – I actually had a couple isotopes today. Where, did, you go to, did you go over to that new restaurant called Teledyne Isotopes? Yeah, I have, I have a friend that works at Teledyne Isotopes. I ordered a few to go. Grubhub just delivered them. <laughs> here your, sir, here are your isotopes. Right. Thank you. Thank tip you. The, tip the driver, please. Right, so bottom line, I said I'm going to find a, uh, a dentist that's not a member of the American Dental Association. She just kind of chuckled. You know, at that point, I think she probably did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you were, I think it turned out you, you were perceived as a nutcase, let's face it. Exactly, you exactly. She, she did the right thing. So yeah. I'm not sure I wouldn't even give her a grade. Yeah, I think grading her might be difficult because there's so, like you said, there's so many twists and turns, and then at the end you said, well, I'm going to find a dentist that's not a member. Right. So, so right. she had to just say, okay, bye. I mean, she, so maybe she should get an A for that part, for that part at least. Yeah, I, I'm going to give her a not bad. I didn't like the whole fraud thing. No, that, that's, that, was, that, that's, no. that was kind of BS. Okay, so to summarize, I think we can both agree that she should have done everything possible. Be kind, invite you into the office for your initial exam, or even for a consultation to talk about it. And then once you're there, that's when they handle the whole thing, not on, not on the phone. Right, so, so it never should have gotten to the phase of, well, maybe you should find it. You know, I want to find a dentist yeah. that's not a member of the ADA or eating a banana, all that BS. So again, I'm going to lower her grade now to a B, maybe a radioactive B. We'll give her a B, a, a B, B plus. Or maybe it's like a charged ion, a B minus. I don't know, whatever it is. Not bad, though. Say not bad. That, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I'm grade because she, she probably did the, maybe she, well, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give her a good grade. I'm not, because if she did it right, she would have gotten you in for some type of consultation or first visit to discuss in the office. So she, I think she didn't do it right. So I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go with a D. I'm sorry. Okay. I think she should have said like our office is right next to the tanning center. That would have, you know, maybe would have been good. Okay. Well, Hey, interesting stuff today. That wraps up episode 12 of season two of the dental practice fixers. Thanks so much everybody for all your kind comments and ratings and and all those great things. We really, really love it. And we hope this show is informative to you and helps your practice. So, hey, I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. Dr. David Maddow, we will see you next time.